Greetings. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, we can humble ourselves and uh, we begin again. Our most gracious Father who art in heaven, we thank you, Holy Father, for giving us this opportunity. And we come before you to give us strength and knowledge once again. Let your power be with us, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. God wants to make you useful in the work of God. And uh, we have to be ready to be used. Are you ready to be used? Yes. Uh, and uh, you need to ask the Lord to help you that uh, it doesn't be a waste of time, but it be a time for you to learn and know what God wants of you to, uh, to do in these last days. I want us to check some quote in uh, education, in the book Education, page 272. Uh, the book of Education, 272. Sorry, paragraph two. Education 270, paragraph two. It says, uh, we, what we are going to, to learn now is sanitarium work. Sanitarium work. Sanitarium work. It says the burden of labor for these needy ones. We have needy people in this world. So the burden of labor for these needy ones in the rough places of the earth. Christ lays upon those who can feed for the ignorant and for such as are out of the way. Christ is looking for those who will be able to stand as a bridge in this world they are all those who are ignorant they don't know what is going on they are just there they are continuing with the daily activities not knowing that time is almost finished and then he says he will be present he will be present to help those whose hearts are susceptible to pity Though their hands may be rough and unskilled, he will work through those who can see mercy in misery and gain in loss. When the light of the world passes by, privilege will be discerned in hardship, order in confusion, success in apparent failure. Calamities will be seen as distinguished blessings, wars as masses, laborers from the common people sharing the sorrows of their fellow men as their master shared the sorrows of the whole human race will by faith see him working with them amen mm -hmm. so we are told those whose hearts are knitted uh knitted with the hearts of those who are in the world who are suffering god shall bring a blessing unto them and they will be able to reach their needs or to meet the needs of the people. And that is why we are here. The day, the great day of the Lord is near. The great day of the Lord is near. It is near and hasteneth greatly. And a world is to be warned. 
a world is to be done what? One. God is setting us in this world to warn the world in the way we uh, we live. You know, John the Baptist, when he was here upon the world, his life was a warning. His humility was a warning and an encouragement to those who are seeking for humility. His dress was a, was a school to learn how to dress humbly. And his diet was a warning to those who are, uh, who are intemperate in this world. So our, the first warning that we are giving unto the world is the way we live, the life that we, give, we live into this world. With such preparations as they can gain thousands, as they can gain thousands upon thousands of the youth and those older in, in years should be giving themselves to this work. Which work is mentioned here? Teaching the ignorant. Showing mercy to those who are in misery. And also educating the people on the light, of, on the way of the Lord. So already many hearts are responding to the call of the masters, workers. And their numbers will increase. So there's a promise that as we engage in this work, you may be alone to begin this work or in a Gini restaurant or a sanitarium or publishing house, but there is a promise that if we pray and diligently work and seek for souls who can be trained, the number will increase. Amen? Yeah, so we need to go into this work having the promise of God that the numbers will increase, and we must play our part in training more workers for the work. Let every Christian educator, educator give such workers sympathy and cooperation. Sympathy, cooperation. We have to cooperate and we have to pull together, push together, press together so that we can be able to finish the work. Let him encourage and assist the youth under this is, is care in gaining a preparation to join the ranks. We are in recruitment of workers. Now it says there is no line of work in which it is possible for the youth to receive greater benefit. There is no any work in this world that a youth can gain a greater benefit. Many people today are seeking for the worldly gain and there is a system that the God is not in the thought or in the minds of the people. It is an education that is essentially worldly. God is calling us into not a lazy education life, uh, type life, but an education that is useful and giving solutions to the world. And uh, there is where you can gain benefit. If you want to be rich spiritually and even physically, mentally, go to the work of the Lord. All who engage in ministry are God's helping hand. They are co-workers with the angels. Rather, they are the human agencies through whom the angels accomplish their mission. So each and every one of us here has been given an angel to help you. Uh, with such an army of workers as our youth, rightly trained, might furnish how soon the message of a crucified, risen, and soon coming Savior might be carried to the whole world? How soon might the end come, the end of suffering and sorrow and sin? How soon, in place of a possession here, with its bright of sin and pain, our children might receive their inheritance where the righteous shall inherit the land and dwell wherein forever? They are in forever, where the inhabitants that not, shall not say, I am sick, and the voice of weeping shall be no more heard. Now, who are going to finish this work? Yeah. You're called the youth, the young. If the young are engaged in this work, even the elderly who are touched with this mission work, the finishing work, the Lord will include them in the young ministry. 
Now, these young people, they lack one thing for them to be conquerors in this world. What it is? What is it? What is it? Right train. Rightly trained. So there has not been a proper education to train the youth on how they are supposed to finish the work. In the churches today, you see the youth trained on some martial arts that are not going to benefit them, that is not making them to be useful. God is calling us to train the youth to know how to run the institutions and to spread the work to make the three angels' messages to go to the old world. We need those who are in, uh, those who are called to be medical missionaries, those who are going to be masonries, those who are going to be cooks, those who are going to be publishers, those who are going to be canvassers, those who are going to be hygienic dressmakers, those who are going to be farmers, so that this work can be finished with such an army as our youth, rightly trained. And we are here to rightly train you and me in the divine plan of God. And should you go back and rest, then the Lord will, will count you responsible for the lost, uh, for, the, for the souls that are lost. We are not going to sit, but we must pray and work, work and pray so that the work can be finished. Now, I want us to look at some glimpses of the work in the sanitarium. What is it and what does it entail? How should we operate it according to, the, according to God's plan? And it begins in your home. Your home can be a sanitarium, true or false. Yeah, when I'm speaking about this institution, begin it in your homes before you even think of any facility outside there. Now, what is the objective of our sanitarium work? It is a missionary institution. It is a missionary institution. We found that, um, I think I've not given out that handout, um, but you will just be writing notes. Uh, PH 066, page 47, paragraph 1. PH 066, page 47.1. It says, the success, no, the sanitarium is to be a missionary institution in the fullest sense of the word. And its character in this respect must be preserved or it will not bear upon it the superscription of God. So it is a missionary center. What do you understand by a missionary center? It is a place where people minister to the needs of people, spread the word of God and bring people to Jesus Christ. The success of this institution must be viewed in the light of God's word. How should we run the Gini Christo, uh, the, the uh, sanitarium work? According to the light of the word of God. So we must run it according to the, uh, to the word of God. No only policies should be embraced. No only policies is to embrace in this system. PH 066, 46, paragraph 3. PH 066, the book, pamphlet number 066, 46.3. It says, no only policy is to be embraced in this institution. A no only, no only policy is to be embraced in your home if it is an, a facility or an institution that God has given you to reach out unto the people. No portion of the Lord's... Yes, the book. 
-hmm. The statement is no one leave policies is to be embraced in this institution. It is to be purely run according to the word of God. No portion of the Lord's vineyard has greater possibilities for doing good than the sanitarium. So you must know one of the, uh, the things or the policies that it runs uh, in line with is, is a charity uh, institution. It is a, pl a place where people, people's hearts are being ministered to the necessities of life are being ministered unto. Above everything else in this institution, the spirit of mercy, compassion, human tenderness, the gentleness of Christ is to be manifested. What qualities are mentioned there? We have spirit of mercy, number one. This, the policies in which we are we, we run with. There must be compassion. What else? Human tenderness. There must be human tenderness. Gentleness. Gentleness of Christ is to be manifested. Worldly policy must not prevail. Outward appearances must not be permitted to blind the judgment. Outward appearance, the manner in which people dress, the manner in which people behave, it should be according to the divine plan of God. It should be simplicity, but not simplicity. Simplicity and modesty, according to the word of God, need to be manifested. The poor must receive special attention. <laughs> Are you getting me? The poor must do what? Because they have not the good things of this life. How are you going to help the poor? Continue giving them food, giving them food, giving them food, year in, year out? No, that one you are not going to help them. There is a way we can help the poor and ruin them. You know that? We are told that we are supposed to give them useful activities that they can you they can venture into to make them responsible people in the society job says that the cause i searched for we must ascertain the cause and solve it if it is food what is lacking we invite them train them on how to live on skills and then send them out or find a way of establishing them in those kids. These are agencies that God has chosen so that the, th the three angels' messages may be presented as an experimental, experiential message in the world. It is an economy that is going to solve the world problems during the time when there is no buying and selling. It is to offer the best solution to the world. Yeah. Uh, in PH 06649.1, it tells us its mission. What is the mission of the hygienic, of the sanitarium, sorry? What is its mission? Everyone must know a mission or have a mission. The mission of our hygienic restaurant is uh, it was not to be fashioned after the character of any institution in the world. It was to stand as a seven-day institution, one that should give character to God's cause in the world. So the sanitarium is to give God's character to the world. God's character to the world. It is to demonstrate God's character to the world. In COL 415 and 16 says, the light, the last rays of mercy to be demonstrated to the world is the manifestation of God's love. God's love is to be demonstrated 
So in this, in our homes, country homes, in the hygienic restaurants, in the sanitariums, in the publishing houses, in the garden missionaries, uh, missionary work, in the dressmaking industries, all these are artificial. They are memorials that God has situated in places, different places. Let's say here we had 10 members of the church. If their homes were doing the right things, do you think that this area will still remain the way it is? It will not. So these institutions are memorials. Their mission is to demonstrate God's character to the world. The truth should be the all important thing in the institution. What is it to be demonstrated there? Truth. So there must be the word of God. A sanitarium must have library. It must have a hall where people can study the word of God and do their devotion. It must have a kitchen. It must have a farm where garden missionaries can do their work. The kitchen, Christian cooks are doing their work. It is a busy place. It is a busy place. God's work don't call for those who are lazy. It calls for those who are pious, intelligent, and studious. Remember Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? What were the characters that they were having? They were cunning in knowledge and skills. They are full of wisdom. This is what we are supposed to demonstrate in our sanitariums. Where are they to be allocated? Our sanitariums are to be allocated in the country places. They're supposed to be allocated in places that are far away from the cities, in come places where uh, even lands can be tilled so that people get uh, food to be used in them. Who are the workers in this institution? Who are the workers? MS-162, MS-162, 1897, 162. MS-162, 1897. One of the most important workers here is the matron, matron or patron. The nurse and student nurses should be under the charge of a matron who can be guide, who can be a guide and counselor to them. There must be counselors, and these are elderly people in the church attached to every institution. It is not just for uh, for, for the youths only. Letter 30, 1887, a woman of experience as a matron or a man of experience as a patron. MS, no, letter 30, 1887. Letter, LT, 1887. LT, 30, 1887. The one who occupies the position of a, of a matron in an institution should be a woman of experience who in an emergency knows what needs to be done. So there must be someone who is very intelligent and knows what is to be done. She should be a woman of executive ability, is able to execute things, is able to, she's able to bring plans and those plans should be executed. Our work is to guide the young. Yesterday we learned that in the hygienic restaurant whose salvation is to be cared for first? The, work. the workers, the helpers. So in the sanitarium, the same. The workers must be carefully be taken care of. 
there is a need of a lady physician connected with the institution that is dg 98.3 daughters of god page 98.3 there is need of a lady physician dg 98.3 this is where we have a challenge most of the time we don't have most uh, uh, most of our ladies are not praying that God may give them a knowledge in the line of physician work. And so they can just act as, as nurses and also as helpers. But we want those ladies who are going to dedicate themselves and pray and study intelligently so that they can learn how to reach out to the sick in a higher scale. There is need of a lady physician connected with the institution. And it should be a capable lady physician who can care for the women's patients and be matron of the home. This lady physician can be the matron of the home. The chief physician also Maybe a male physician can act as a patron. And that's why we are told connected with our sanitarium should be a married, mature men that are going to run this institution. This is running institution in a godly way so that there can be no problem that will arise. I want to finish with this. What is the purpose for our sanitariums? What is the purpose for our sanitariums? What is the purpose for our sanitarium? sanitariums? PH094, PH094.1, PH. 094 14.1 it is to help the sick to recover soundness of body and mind it is to help you help the people recover from the soundness of body and mind 94 14.1 your work there is to teach people health of the mind. Many people are sick today because they are not sound in mind. People are stressed in this world. Marriages have become a galling yoke in this world. And so people are, some are sick mentally, some are dying spiritually because of the family issues. Sanitarium is a place to give them sound of body and mind. It is to teach people health principles. Teaching people health principles in 1MR 66.5. 1MR 66.5. The main work of this memorial institution is to teach people health principles. It says people are to be taught how by carefulness in eating and drinking they may keep well. Do you understand your duty in the sanitarium? It is for you to teach people how to eat and drink. You know, uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 30, says that whether you drink, you eat or drink, do all to the glory and honor of God. 1MR 66.5 teaching people principles of health, new start, nutrition, exercise, water, teach them to rest, teach them to be in the sun, teach them to do gardening work, teach them to exercise regularly, sleep uh, well, teach them
to remove all things that exert the system, like the televisions. Do you know that most people are sick because of watching televisions over and over again until their cortisol levels have increased because we watch series that makes the body to shock. It puts the body into a shock and someone can develop a high blood pressure or stroke. People need to be taught right principles of living. Uh, 1MR 67.1, it is to teach people that we do not live to eat, but that we eat to live. We eat to live. We do not live to eat, but we eat to do what? Yeah. And that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. That is the objective, the purpose of the hygienic, uh, of the sanitarium. 1 M 67.2. It is an agency for teaching truth and revival of pure elevated morality. 1MR 67.2. It teaches truth, it teaches purity, it teaches morality. Three things. Truth, purity, and morality. Christianity today has been a, a, just a, a profession. Morality matters are not. We are told that ministers should not go to places of the same gender, a man, with, a man and a wife, a man and someone is not his wife should not be like that. It should not, we should actually avoid any appearance of if, if if it is if possible, maybe two genders, uh, a male, I can be one man and two or three, ladies, not a man and another woman who are not related, who are not married, just to do what they may be very genuine, they may not think about any other thing wrong, but in the appearance of people, it is going to create. It is going to create I mean, a bad impression. So God's people always need to be very careful. In our sanitarium, the truth is to be cherished, not banished or hidden from sight. The light is to shine forth in clear, distinct grace. These institutions are the lost facilities for the revival of pure, elevated morality. Elevated morality. The way we talk, we're not just talking and laughing anyhow. You'll find where people are just uh, lazy or careful, careless. They just laugh and, and and jiggle and jittle around and just here and there. People are laughing. It, not, it need not to be seen in all our institutions. Most so for young ladies and young men talking about others. We must know that it is a place for developing an elevated morality, elevated morality. And courtship and marriage is not to be practiced in that area. It is not. The counselor need to know, the matron, the patron need to be taking care of these people and knowing really what is going on. Nothing is to be carried in the under the carpet. No, this is going to defame God's work. 1MR 328.3. They are God's memorial for the conversion of souls. We will meet people who have been drunkards. They come in this place. It is like an, a rehabilitation center where they are going to learn the principles of heaven and they be. 
restored to, to good health and be Christians. It is a place for salvation of souls. Anyone who visits this institution, he has been or she has been brought into a place where she or he learns how to live with Jesus Christ. It prepares people for the second coming of Jesus Christ in 1 MR to 28.4. Preparing the people for the second coming of, of the Lord. I hope and I believe that God is speaking to us. Let your home be a sanitary or a treatment room or a hygienic restaurant. Principles supplied in those places. And when we go out, we will be an army of youth that is might punished, rightly trained. And we are going to conquer and to prosper and to bring the glory and the character of God to the world. Are we ready for that work? May we think upon, upon those things and God is ready to help us in Jesus' name. Can we pray? Holy Father, what in heaven, we thank you for this wonderful time that you've given unto us as your children. We pray that we may be might punish that we finish this work. Let your will be done in our lives, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.